Okay, we're live for episode 7 now of Our Time Is Now. Got a special guest for y'all today. He goes by the name of Hashi. I'm going to confirm that. I know it's got the V that's usually an A. I know an artist that does that. So, you know, we're going to see. Uh, just to confirm, otherwise goes by 6. That's what I've been calling him. So, we got... Hashi 6 on episode 7 of Our Time Is Now, baby. This is a up-and-coming, super-talented artist. And I suggest you look him up right now, whether you're streaming on Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, Google Play, iTunes, whatever the case is. Hashi, that's H-V-S-H-I. If you're into that early 2000s scene, he's got a new project called No Surprises right now. I heard that song, and that just put me on. I was like, yo, this is crazy. You know, he's got that 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 throwback vibe with a new sound, which is pretty dope. Um, we're going to talk, chop it up. We're going to, you know, run through the cards, the blame the cards game. We're going to just pretty much see what he's got in the works, talk a little bit into the music industry, see what's going on. And uh, yeah, I think it should be a good time. Good show, good musician, good artist, good vibes, good whatever. Everything's good. Good music, baby. You know what I'm saying? So without any further ado, let's get into it. We go call the buck. Salute. Episode 7. Our time, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. In this corner, weighing in at 195 pounds, he is from Long Island, New York, the challenger, Tom War! However, from here on and forever, our time is now! What up, G? What's going on, bro? How's it going? What's happening with you? How you doing? Yeah, yeah. My bad for the uh, confusion, Hey, man. Bro. Just sitting in the studio now. Oh, no worries. You texted me this morning. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, yeah, I'm in Arizona. So I was like okay. three hours off. I figured. I didn't know if it was like Midwest, West. I was like, shit, I should have asked. I didn't check like New York time, Cali time. So I was calling you like 8 a.m. or some shit, right? <laughs> Yep, yep. But uh, what's going here. on, bro? I mean, I've been uh, trying to get you on here. I've been looking forward to this, actually. Same, man. I'm excited. Just uh, lots of new releases lately. Yeah, bro. New music and whatnot. We've been talking behind the scenes, so it's cool to finally get, get something going. I've seen you with that Christian, uh, I don't know if it's Pfeiffer or what his last name is or something. The marketing yep, dude. Yep. Yeah, he'd he be uh, posting yep. some motivational shit. You working with him? Yep, absolutely. That's uh, that's my guy right now. He's doing my marketing and all my distribution and everything, getting getting the songs to the right people. Cool, yo. It's been crazy. I forgot how I actually came across you. If it was someone's story or something along that lines, I think it was the Guns and Roses video drop though. Like what, like a couple months ago or something. Yeah, damn. That's yeah, really I cool. I initially heard you, and then uh, it, it's very hard for me to get into new artists and like the feed the content age. But when I heard it, it was like a nostalgic with a new age feel. And I was like, yo, this kid's got something going on here. Hey, that's dope. I appreciate that, man. That's, that's super cool. That, uh, yeah, that's that how last I project. my music is. Now, now What's that? let me just get this straight right quick. Is it Hashi? Yep. Okay. Cause yep. The v, I, I know a dude who goes by artist and he uses a V as an A. And I was like, I hope it's Hashi, but I was just calling you six to people. Cause Oh yeah, <laughs> is that is that like your other name, Six? Yeah, yeah. Right. That's why I did that too, just because that's a lot easier to pronounce and stuff. Oh, she makes it complicated. Yeah, well, well <laughs> it, it, I figured it was because of the V and the A, and I knew somebody. But for the regular person, like I was showing people, and I was like, just Hashi, but the V is an A. Just look it up. Right, but, uh, right. That that, that project with the Guns and Roses was tight because you really got into the character and and really made that shit. Hey, like, that I appreciate Rose that, shit. man. That's what I I love the. I love the 808 and all the modern sounds and stuff, but 
the the old rock star vibe in the eighties and stuff. That's that's what I fall in love with. So that was hella cool. It's, to it's good to bring get, it back. get dressed up like that. Well, you you did a eighty eight was the project or something. I was listening to yeah. recently. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I think I I think I was looking through like last night briefly just to get an idea. You had like eleven projects, like three EPs or something out right now. Yep, we got the Wake Up EP and then Forever is a Moment EP. But that was kind of just like an in-between thing in the 1988. And then now we just dropped No Surprise. So, no yeah, so I guess three. Dope. Thank you. That's that, that punk that, rock that, that's, stuff. That song, No Surprise, that, I think that's the song that really caught my <laughs> attention where I was looking through the catalog and I was like, I was we were driving to Rhode Island last weekend. We had one of my homegirls, and I was like, "Yo, you got to hear this shit." And I just put on the album, and then I was playing a couple more. Hey. So I'm just like, "This is the same guy," and I was like, "Yep, same dude." Hey, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. We go from from some trap records, and then that's like a whole straight punk rock song. It, I surprised myself with that one when I made that one. Uh, that was crazy. Now, <laughs> who, who are some of your influences? Like, who influences you the most? Um, I got a lot of different influences. I love. Uh, my original like first favorite artist was like Kid Cudi, Wiz Khalifa. I've always been in love with like that vibey music, but how Kid Cudi can make dope songs, but he's still like filling you with an emotional story the entire time. Mm-hmm. So I always wanted to do that. So I fell in love with artists like that, and then I grew up on Green Day and Molly Crew and The Grateful mm-hmm. Dead and like all sorts of classic rock from my parents and stuff like that. And then later in life, ended up, you know, liking a lot of trap music and Black Bear and, um, you know, Future and different influences like that to where you're, you're, it turned I, into I, like I, a... You can tell it influences your style because you're getting it from all different angles, bro, your music. Heck yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, that's why I, I never wanted to be one thing. I always wanted to try to... Well, that's together. what I hate genres for, bro. I hate that people throw you in a category and it's like, as soon as you step outside your lane, it's like, well, well, I like this. And it's like, that's cool. But I'm, I'm this person that's reflective of more things than just what you think I am. Exactly. And I think that's artistry, you know, is just finding, finding a lane and then taking several different avenues. Like you don't got to stay on that straight path the whole time. Oh, most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. That's a, uh, I got a lot of my fans a lot of fans really love when i do this new genres and stuff but a lot of fans are like what are you doing like you know you make like you know like hip-hop music why are you making punk stuff i'm like i don't always necessarily feel like that <laughs> you know like, it's what you grew <laughs> up on too like you know yeah, i mean yeah. just because you made you started making hip-hop music I, i'm starting as an artist too to expand my boundaries and do some shit and i'm like i never would have thought i'd do this shit but i'm like fuck it if you don't experiment yeah. you're not gonna know what works for you absolutely when well, even even going in and making like those punk songs i've my new ep that i'm working on six six right now um is a lot more you know kind of like my basic style not basic style but like just vibey bangers and 808s and fun stuff but going away from it for a minute and working on that punk project like coming back to this like i'm writing so much different on on like a rap song now just because my brain was thinking differently i was writing flows for straight up rock songs so then going back to like a trap beat is like i have so many new ideas and I, like things that i wouldn't have necessarily tried to apply that i am trying now that just sounded crazy so yeah. you just got to push that envelope a little bit that's it bro you got to run with it now i mean do you uh like you write produce record engineer all your own shit yeah, I don't produce all of it. I produce some yeah, of it. Yeah, I'm sure you not, have like I, guests, I, or you you find a beat from your homeboy or a producer, like send me that beat. But you're doing like all your engineering yeah. and shit, tracking. Yeah, I, I record myself, engineer myself, mix, master, drop it. Cause that shit, that shit's official, bro. Everything, like, that shit everything's is really right nice, you know. And hey, thank you. Being thank an you. artist myself, thank I you. feel the hardest part is to do yourself because sometimes when you're writing it and you're like singing it to yourself, and then when you when you record it and you hear it back. The vibrations in your voice yeah. are different than what the mic picks up, and you're like, "Fuck, I gotta change that," or that's not how I pick shit in. Right. So that's right. the hardest task is engineering yourself. Absolutely, but that's that's kind of why I started engineering though, because I'd be in studios and stuff, and I'm I'm really picky and stuff like that. So I'd be in there, and be like, "Yo, I wanna I want it to sound like this. Let's do that." And then, you know, usually your engineer is like, "Oh, well, it's supposed to do this and this and this," and then you gotta deal with that till eventually i was like well i'm just gonna do this myself so then no one can tell me what to do that's it you know i mean sometimes it helps to to feed off other people's creative energy in the room but sometimes you just gotta lock yourself in that box and go to fucking work you know 
Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and I like working with other people too. It's it's super cool, but I'm a I'm a super like picky person, so it's a lot easier sometimes to just sit by myself and just go through it all for hours and do it how I want. Yeah, well, I I saw the track you did with actually Dizzy Wright, and I thought that was dope because it's funny. Dizzy is like my personal top ten. Like, hey, I really that's don't sick. Think, I don't think anybody grinds harder than that guy. I mean, shout out to Dizzy and the whole still moving. Reezy, you know, I use a couple of Reezy's beats here and there, and uh, that, dude, yeah. that dude's just consistently putting out projects. So when I saw that, I was like, "Oh For shit!" Real. He did a he did a joint with Dizzy. Yeah, heck yeah, that's he, a, he's that's just dope. one of those Thank chill you. dudes. And uh, Demrick too, another one who I fuck with, who I've I've chilled with a couple of shows out here on the East Coast in Philly and Elmira, New York, and he's always humble, like buying shots and shit. And, Oh yeah, no, they're super cool. They came out to Arizona right after we did that song together, and we did a show together and everything. Okay, they're just they're super super cool dudes. I was on tour with Mark Battles for two years before that. That's actually how I got connected with Dizzy. Okay, um, and yeah, you, you I was, smoke up on the Dizzy OG. He get you high on the OG. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, 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 man. He he's he grinds like you said. That dude just never stops. Like. Like that's his project. That like that was the coolest name. It was like uh, keep working, no one cares. Mm-hmm. Like, or, uh, and that's that's real. Like my, I think just I keep think working. my favorite is TGA two and TGA one yeah. was pretty dope. Uh, the four agreements was like one of the, one of his first projects, right? Was it yeah, yeah. Those agreements? are some of my favorite projects for sure. And uh, Our, the his growing song process. Can't that was like yep. I think that was my favorite overall. Yeah, bro. I remember the song that made me a Dizzy Wright fan. Can't trust them. I heard that song. Can't trust like, none like, of these. Can't trust yeah, none of these hoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah bro. Oh my he came goodness. out with the backpack. I, they were battle rapping him and yeah. Hobson. I think that's one of my bro, first joints I heard too. Yeah, man. I was so high at my friend's house, and they played that song. That was the first time I ever heard Dizzy Wright, and I was just I remember being like. What the hell is this? That was this one of so the first hard. joints I heard. I, the first yeah, one I think yeah. I heard was the 2012 where he's like, Hello, worlds, Dizzy Wright, the fucking maniac. An angel sent me a bag of weed with my fucking brain attached. I was like, What? Who oh, the fuck is yeah. this cat? And Hobson yeah, was man, coming out, like, funk volume was blowing up. And I don't know, it was yeah. an era of hip hop that should be remembered. That was like the independent breakthrough. No, for know? real. Yeah, they were really riding that shit for real. As independent artists, that's, that was crazy. He's still killing it. Like that's oh, yeah. that's crazy. He, he, he has still, a store out running. there. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it's in AZ. He has one in Vegas though. Vegas, Vegas. Yeah, what is it? Is it still moving yeah. the store? Uh, I think I think that's what it is. Yeah, something like that. Um, I uh, mean, I, yeah, but back to you. No surprise is definitely. I think my favorite joint off the project. It brings me back to that early two thousands era. I know you like you said you yeah, had yeah. so many inspirations, but like. It brought me back to like, yeah, that, that punk era. And for other people to tell you, you know, I'm used to seeing you as a rapper. It's like, I think Machine Gun right. Kells it, did it. You know, Travis Barker did it from reverse. He went from like the, the band scene into the hip hop scene working yeah. with hip hop artists. So yeah, it's really about just finding who you work well with. And if it organically happens, great. I don't feel like you should push it. But I mean, like, hey, if it's a career move and it's something you got to kind of push and you're like, hey, you know, like. It's a fan yep. exchange. Do what you got to do to be successful, you know? Who, who's to right, take food Right, right. Well, and that, that was the craziest part about that project is usually I get so, like, I have to do this, and it's got to do this many views when I drop it, and, like, I get way too intense about it. And this one, it was just fun. Like, I, I was just like, you know, like, I love, like, punk music and that whole scene, you know? Like, I've always been obsessed with the 80s and, like, shit like that. I was like, I'm just going to make some shit that I feel like making, like, it doesn't necessarily, when I dropped it, I was like, I don't even know if like, people are going to like like it, whatever. And so I just dropped it and like just was kind of content with whatever it was. And man, we we hit career spikes. Like, Yo, bro, like we, was it, weren't been, you like two weeks ago, numbers. like, weren't you like 15 or 17? You were like, let's get to 20 or 25, then 30, then 40. Now you're at 50 or some shit? Yeah, yeah. Within like, like literally. What, like a month and a half time, two, two months yeah. or some shit? Yeah, like literally a month. Like we were at 15k, and I was already stoked on that. Like, wow! Like we're at 15,000 monthly listeners. This is cool. That's after you dropped then, no surprises. That was like, yep. Okay, so yep, this has right, really been right your that. skyrocket. Yeah, that it turned it up. I didn't even expect it either. So it was, we dropped that, and I was like, well, let's do 20. And then I went to check to see if we did 20, and it was at 30. And I was like, oh my god, what? <laughs> 
<laughs> you're pushing you're been... pushing 50 so- shortly right like yeah up, yeah like, we're about we're about to break that I think, soon i think bro, six, six pretty soon you're gonna be at 100k and then it's just gonna go bro Ooh, when i saw man, it that... i was like i was like dude this dude is like blowing up i was like i gotta get him on the show before he's fucking like <laughs> billboard or some shit it'll be impossible to get in touch with dude <laughs> shit <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Dude, I hope so too, bro. I hope so too. It's hard to come across a talent that does everything that you do and, you know, is consistently putting out. And like I said, doing all your, your engineering and shit, that, that, that's what takes the toll. Cause artists be pumping out 150, 200 songs, but they tracked it. They never engineered it. They never mixed it. They never organized it. They're just sitting on shit. For real. And For real. Yep. You know, you're just wasting time, and time ain't going backwards. You know, you gotta, you gotta keep up with the, sure. the feed, the content age. Just keep pushing shit, pushing shit, pushing shit. Somebody's gonna hear it and be like, "I fuck with this." You, ha- you have any luck with like any That's radio play all I'm out there? To do. Um, yeah. So actually, I've been talking to ninety three three All A Z Radio out here in Arizona, and uh, working on some songs that that's gonna fit that like. Um, there's a couple songs that are radio ready and I'm not cussing on off that EP um, that I want to try to get on there and we've been working on. Um, I actually just made a new song that happened by accident. This um, actually going to be the radio play, though. Yeah, um, Yeah, I, I swear I, we was in the studio just hanging out, making a song and it just really worked like the craziest like pop hip hop like twisted love story like like the most radio song like i could have ever made and we just made it as an accident like but um yeah we're definitely putting a campaign behind that and that's definitely gonna be headed that way for sure good shit man good shit i mean i'm I'm looking forward to seeing the growth where it comes and and from just the short amount of time into where you're gonna go and i don't know bro i i know a dude i'm sure you heard of him john bellion Oh my goodness, man! I was just going off about him. That is the guy. (laughs) Yo, it's funny. That is the guy, man. I went to high school with dude, and uh, there's a picture of us in fucking senior banquet, dude, in our yearbook, and it's like he's at the top of the crowd, and I'm like right here, and I'm the only dude wearing a Yankee fitted to the fucking senior banquet, and it was like. (laughs) I, I didn't even know he was an artist at that time. Like, I always thought he was... Well, I, I knew he made songs, but I was like... I thought he was going to be like a famous basketball player or some shit, you know? And then... Right, yeah, he's low he's so good at ball. Then he's doing, like, his fucking producing, engineering. Like, he was doing it in school, too, as a hobby. But when we graduated is when he really took off with it. And he, he does the same shit. Writes, records, produces, engineers his own shit. And... <laughs> That's so crazy you brought monster. him up. Dude is a monster. Yeah. And uh I got Dude. I got in touch with him at a Philadelphia show back in twenty sixteen. Like at the electric wow. factory. And funny story, dude, is um I, I paid for coat check and I I got drunk as fuck and I left my coat inside. So I'm out back and it's like an M and M concert, dude. Like they got the gate here and everybody with their vinyls ready for him to come out and sign, beautiful mind. And I'm like, shit, yo, it's fucking cold. I left my jacket inside. So I went around the front of the venue and I walk in and I got this shit on video. I was like drunk. I thought I was on a James Bond mission. And I'm like, (laughs) there's my jacket. And it was just me and one other drunk motherfucker who left their jacket. The other hangers were empty. And I like did a barrel roll over the counter and got my jacket. And I get off and the band's breaking down the drums and shit. And I was like, let me go backstage. And I go backstage, dude. And like logic like walked right past me i didn't even give a shit i was just like i'm here to see my boy john you know and he was like playing pool bro and like i was like what's up bro remember me and he looked up and he's like yo tyler wilson what's up bro like let's go talk so we talked so hard for like a half hour dude just bless me with knowledge i was like yo ascap or bmi trying to pick his mind but i was drunk as shit bro my sister just passed away right oh yeah hey much love that yeah yo the only thing i remember is like from the night really without like the videos and the pictures is like he prayed for me like he was like yo let's pray bro. oh that's hard um, pray with me and then uh i went out the back door afterwards with a security guard got his number so we could talk and i went one way and he was getting on his tour bus and i just walked up the alleyway like yo like that eight mile scene like peace out john peace out Tyler. yeah like, just sliding that's hard and uh wow that's amazing you brought him up man like i was literally just telling one of my friends they were like, so like, what inspired you to like record yourself and do all your shit yourself? And I was like, John Bellion. Really? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> bro, I swear, just because, like, I know our music doesn't necessarily sound alike or nothing, but, like, bro, that's one of my biggest inspirations. Like, that guy. I would love to see animal. you work together, like, bro. Like, just in the oh studio my God. with genre clash. Bro, that would be amazing. That would be a dream come true. That guy is, like, it's uh, him and Black Bear, like, maybe, inspire maybe, maybe me so much just to, like, push that envelope. And reach out to you, dude. <laughs> bro, that was, whew. Man, yeah. I wouldn't even know. I, I know he's probably crazy. he's probably like laying back at the music scene right now. He's been he's been laying low since his last project yeah. drop, Glory Sound Prep. But uh, I would yeah. love to see that. Yeah, happen. that's why I love him, bro. He's so down to earth and real. Like he's so real. Like like just who he is. Like he's a real person. He the, the fame doesn't even touch him, man. Yeah, no, like, don't. He's bro, so he's, cool. He's the, like, that that which is crazy because that the song same kid from the high school. And I'm just like, when I hear that shit, I'm like, I, I can yeah. vouch for that shit. Like, that, that's yeah, real. Like, he never went Hollywood yeah. on him, you know? Yeah, no, he's a real dude, bro. And that's that's one thing that always inspired me because, you know, I I get lost in the rock star shit because like, I'm crazy and I like that's being good, crazy. Though. But, but yeah, just like he's like one of those dudes you can watch and be like, all right, man, you got to remember to be humble. You got to remember where you came from. You got to remember why you're doing it. And you got to do it good. And you got to do it for love. That's it. Like... But I, he he he's also I'm sure he had his cro- his crazy wild times too you know but oh, now yeah, he's he, just he's yeah. reached that stage where it's like been there done that shit now I just want to live life and yeah. enjoy and yeah start a family or, or do family things you know right that real life shit but you know you you you're still building your foundation but you could get there bro the music industry oh, is absolutely. cutthroat I mean it's it's definitely oh, the sh- worst industry in the world if you want to get into business nobody says like I want to get into the music industry and thinks it's gonna be an easy ride like. All right, this is gonna be fun. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna get ripped off, g'd, screwed, fucked over. Yeah. It's all gonna happen, yeah. bro. Someone's gonna take half your royalties. Your pro- look what happened to the game. Like that chick or some shit sued him, and now she gets all his uh, last album, rap, rap, whatever the hell his last album was. I can't think of it, but she gets all his yeah. streaming royalties. Yeah, I heard about that. You gotta be careful, man. Shit. That's what uh, Christian working with him been good because he's just been putting me on the stuff like. Man, it's not just the beats that you gotta have cleared. You gotta have the samples and mm-hmm. like the every sound's gotta be clear. And you gotta make sure that you got the license for this and the, the contracts for that and everything in between. And like you can get, like you said, you can get really screwed. I was signed to uh, like a label management um, while I was on tour with Mark Battles and stuff for like two years. And it's it's uh, it's definitely a shiesty business because if you don't check your stuff and Make sure that it's all taken care of, right? Like you said, people are taking your money and all taking time. your songs. I got videos stolen from me, fucking. Sure. Also, all Pro- sorts of producers, shit. Producers, bro, engineers. Like you're lucky you do it yourself because if you go to another studio, people will record your verse, hold that shit, and then resell that verse or some shit or no, make yeah, a contest out of it. Like, oh, enter the contest, twenty bucks. We'll give you this, you know, this Hashi verse with the beat and create some shit. Yeah, and you're like, oh, oh what yep, the fuck? I exactly. never approved that. Like, I never even planned to put the song out. Whatever. No, for real, that shit happens. Like, even yeah, like I had somebody not that long ago, like pop up with a with a feature by me. I'm like, what? I never did a feature for this person. And then, like you said, yeah, I'm like, oh, this is just some shit I recorded, never dropped. Somebody got a hold of it. That's so it. all right, somebody somebody <laughs> made a quick buck there. Like, yo, bro, I got this feature, a hundred bucks. You want it? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you gotta be careful, but I mean, it's all a learning process. I was pretty young and shit when I got into this, and it literally went from like I was just like a young ass kid in the bedroom with my brother, like trying to make some cool shit and find a way to like, yo, you leave for tour next week, and like this is what you need, and this is doing this, and like, like out of nowhere. So I kind of like let myself get walked on a little bit and kind of in the beginning it's up a lot of shit, you're so. navigating bro you're learning the shit oh yeah you know like I've been, oh, yeah. I've been doing music i went to school for audio too like over 10 years now like 11 years now and fucking i'm still learning shit every day and i'm like it took me like right. seven years to even just learn the business side of it for for the first seven it was just fucking around making songs fun now i gotta lease beats and yeah. do this and do that and like you said clearing shit yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, it's all new but like why the fuck wasn't i focused on this earlier because you got to master one aspect to move on to the next to to, to get right up that right yeah that's that's i've been kicking myself lately like as I get older, I'm like, damn, like I should have known this. Like I, I could have saved but, myself so much time if I just would have done this. But 
Yeah, you gotta Sacrifice. you gotta take the bumps and bruises. You gotta you gotta do that shit. Otherwise, you won't be ready when when the real tests get here, and that shit gets crazy. Once you, once you get to the stadium, shit, you got to worry who you surround yourself with. Right now, right, you, can make, you, can, right. you can afford a couple mistakes here and there, but once you start getting to that point where it's like, okay, you got 50 yeah. people around you now instead of five, your inner circle just went boop, and you're like, I never met Jose, John, and Tito, and, and Michael, and shit. Like, what? Yeah, but now they're all here. You know, yeah. well, well, this guy's your, your PR rep. This guy's that. This guy, oh, shit, okay, who's handling what, you know? Like exactly. it's easy when you got your small management team and uh yeah, your exactly. best friends doing this and that, but Yeah, definitely. Paul, and I'm like I said, I'm a picky person, so it's crazy like when you finally like you as you get bigger, you gotta release some of the responsibility to other people and you can't always like do trust it other yourself. Exactly. You gotta trust other people to do it and you gotta trust them to ride it how you would want it to go and all that. So you gotta that's what I always I always tell people they're like, hey, man, all the numbers are getting bigger, everything's growing. Like, aren't you excited? And I'm like, yeah, I'm like beyond excited. But the bigger it gets, the more stressful it gets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's part of the fun. Once you get to that point where you're, where your where your music is like self satisfying and you're making a, a complete living off it or whatever, and you never have to worry about doing that nine to five or that other bullshit. You'll be yeah. thankful. You'll be like, that hard work paid off. This is what I was working towards. You know, I set my goal and I accomplished my yeah. goal. Now let me keep going. Yeah, definitely. Like that, that's a mission. That's uh, yeah, I can't, I can't even wait till like music's literally just taking care of life. That, that'd be crazy. You but never, I had an accomplishment. Who, who you're touching too, like who, like who, whose yeah. life you can save or some shit by hearing right. your song that going, you know, like, Oh See, that's one of the craziest things. I, I've had some fans. Uh, I'm from Washington. I got a lot of fans there that really ride for me so hard, and I appreciate that. Shout out to Washington. Yeah. But, like, I got a bunch of people out there. Like, I've had kids message me and be like, like, my song, If I Die Tomorrow, um, that's one of my favorite songs I ever made. And, like, that song, like, I was, like, in tears making that song. Just, you know, you know, like, sitting there, like, going through some shit. My pops passed away while I was on tour. Um, and then I ended up coming home just to mayhem. Yeah, appreciate that. And, but like, I made that song, you know, like on the verge of being like, yeah, I can't take this. I can't do this shit. Like, and I made the song, you know, if I want, if I die tomorrow, I don't want to go away. I got way more to do. I got so much more to do. I got so many things to say. And I've had so many kids message me like, bro, that song saved my life. And it's just like, like literally like just busting the tears. Like what? Like, Fuck the money and everything. Like you telling me right now, like this changed the way that you live. Like that's crazy. Like, like that. That's the real dream because that's all I ever wanted to do with music. It's like my that's my first not. biggest idol was always yeah, Kid Cudi. You know, and if you if you're a Kid Cudi fan, you know that dude saves lives. Like he, he's one of those dudes that always flew under the radar and never got the recognition he got. I mean, he deserved. He never got the recognition absolutely. he deserved. But um. Other other than that, you know, Lonely Stoner seems to free his mind at night. Like that song blew up back in yeah. like what oh six oh seven or something. But if yep. you listen to his catalog, bro, it goes so much more beyond it's Lonely so Stoner. Real. You know? So yeah, it's so real. His music's amazing. Oh, and he has a he has an EP. He's flirted with rock and roll too. He plays guitar. He um, Kurt Cobain was one of his biggest influences. So he has a whole album that's like a straight rock album. That's also another thing that like influenced me to do the No Surprise EP and, and you know blend genres a little bit. It's like people like that. Was he signed to Kanye? Good music, was he? He was. Mm -hmm. right? yeah, he was so. for a while. Now he's on. He does Wicked, which is his his deal. Now, now wait. Um, what's him that, and Kanye are so cool. You, you said what's that song you said that you were talking about? Uh, that the kid hit you up for the lyric. You said it saved him. Uh, if I die tomorrow. If I die tomorrow, and and I know I know you said you lost your pop. I I did want to say that that is one of my favorite pictures of you on your Instagram where you guys are both picking your nose. Oh heck yeah, thank Yo, you. He looked like a pretty dope, funny guy, like a cool guy to Man, hang out with. Man, he he was that uh, dude. That's how, most people. Well, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, how long has he been gone? Um, it's been two years now. Two years. Yeah, it's tough, man. Yep, it's crazy. It, does. it seems like yesterday, but it seems like so I'm, an I'm, eternity. I'm, I'm gonna listen to this song again and and see like now because now it has more of a meaning, like coming from you. Now, I know the direct meaning of it, so it's gonna be more than music now. I appreciate it's that. Hit home, bro, probably make me cry a little bit. 
but <laughs> definitely definitely that's that's one of the, i love that song i'm gonna re-release that song soon sure. actually because it uh it, it was cool on the ep but it kind of just didn't get all the recognition that it should have and it i was super fucked up and everything at the time when i like released all that so I it's part really... of the growth yeah you know, like you're, so you're gonna release I, stuff now and then four years you're gonna be like i don't know why i put that out but if you didn't put it out you wouldn't be able to see your growth and how far you've come and oh absolutely you, you'll actually be That's thankful a, yeah. you'll be like i'm glad i put that out because it it, it it was just like another brick in the road to where i'm at now exactly it pays paves the way definitely but, yeah no that, it's it's crazy how how far like music's taking things just from from all that like because it started just back in washington tiny little city went on tour he passed away moved to arizona did another one and uh we've just been running ever since covid screwing everything up he probably he probably gave yeah. you a little kick in the ass and said hey I'm, I'm riding this journey with you i'm gonna be with you now i'm your, I'm your road manager let's roll bro yeah dude you know? what's crazy about that is i have the text message on my phone still i never deleted it the night before he passed away, I was walking on stage and he texted me and he just texted me, I'm always with you, no matter what, I'm always with you. And I walked on stage and did the show. And then after after the show, um, that's when I found out um, that he would passed away. And it was just so crazy. I was like, how did he know? Like, you tell me that. Like, like, <laughs> like what? It was, it's crazy. So like, just like you said, and you just look. Sometimes, Hello. sometimes the universe works in ways we don't fucking get yet, bro. And even if we try, For real, to it's way we're bigger. We're never gonna know. It's you know, way bigger than us. We, we get caught up in so much bullshit sometimes that we lose focus of what's real and what we need to focus on, and the way we should live life, or the way that we think we should live life, or what we think is right and wrong. But how do we really know if we're not actually experiencing it? Oh, definitely, you know, so definitely. You, you, everybody, you know, the old saying, like, just go with the flow. Sometimes it's easier said than done. You might you might feel that you're about to drown, but shit, human bodies float, man. So you never know. We might just yeah, you should. ride that tsunami yeah, yeah. all the way through the town. Exactly. You just got to ride it out. You know? That's that's one thing I've always loved is, you know, life hurts and life's great. You know, life, life will put you in a lot of different positions. But, you know, life's always been exciting to me. So, you know. I've always been wondering, you know, just ride this shit out, whether it's good, bad, or in between, just see what happens. Nothing's going to be lasting forever. Like, nothing lasts forever. Mm -hmm. The good doesn't last forever. The bad doesn't last forever, no matter what. Something new is coming. Yeah. So you just got to stay on the edge of your seat and just hold on. Yeah, I, I think that's what we do, you know. We get caught up in life, whether you're working a job, you're too tired, you're this, you're that. Make time, bro. Don't take that work after uh, that after. After work nap, like go, get up and go out, do go for a fucking walk in the park, see some shit. Yeah, you know, do something. I mean, some of the best things in life are free if you actually do it. Like people, like you know, I enjoy dating apps. Like I enjoy simple walks on the beach. Like sounds corny as shit, but in reality, like a fucking nice walk on the beach is dope as shit if you're into that. Type no, of for thing. real, you gotta get you gotta get your mind open and just kind of break the cycle. When, when, like, I, when I was in Rhode Island, I had like we we rented a room right on the house, and it's the first time I've seen like an ocean in like. I don't know, fucking, I used to, I grew up on, on Long Island, so it was like seven years since I've really been to an ocean, except for Florida visits for like a week at a time, but dog, I like sat out there, meditated, had like a crazy out-of-body experience, I think the frequency of the waves just made me like fucking trip, Hell like, yeah. I was making hand yeah, motions, over, and I felt like, I felt like my hand was like a rainbow following behind it, like all the motions <laughs> I was doing, I was like having this That's crazy, crazy. Trip. and I'm like, nature, bro. Nature could do this shit. No, for real, bro. When you're in the right element, the world will take you over, man. It's so much bigger than this. We don't even realize, you know, how how much everything's tied in and how much these vibes all go together. Like, it's wild. Invisible auras. I recommend if you haven't. I just did a free trial for this Gaia app, G A I A. Or I've seen that. I've and seen that. I've been seeing it forever. I said, "Fuck it, let me try it, bro." And some of the shit in there talking about DNA and energy and meditation and all this crazy shit. Yeah. And like it's given me a new perspective. Like I always had this perspective, but seeing people talk about it and really get immersed in like an app that's strictly dedicated towards that. I don't know. It's been like life changing this past week, bro. Like I've been like trying yeah, to. Bro, that's amazing to hear. And fucking dope. That's amazing to hear. That I used to be so uh so like spiritual and like into stuff like that. I used to always be meditating and like super 
super into that sort of thing. My music, honestly, when I first started, it used to be a lot more kind of like, uh, what do you call that? Like laid back. Conscious. Okay. Conscious. Like, yeah, like, but like conscious, like, yeah, like laid back, but like more conscious and just like about the world and well, Dizzy, life bro. and shit. Dizzy is like huge. Exa- no, exactly. Right, like, like, like world peace and, uh, you know, change your mind and like grow your mind and shit like that. It's just like, like a lot, like kind of that type of vibe, but more like R and B. Um, but yeah, I used to be super like that. Kind of got away from it and everything. And I mean, especially when we went on tour, I kind of just got wrapped up in like, yeah, we're getting fucked up and doing shows every new night. Experience, <laughs> you know, like, like new yeah. experience. There's the, the, yeah, the a time and place for everything, and that was the time. Absolutely, for... that, that's something I've always I've always heard. Is there's a time. My dad would always say, "There's a time and place for everything." You know. You know, everything has its moment. You can't do, you can do anything too much too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you just gotta, you gotta, everything's about a balance and shit. And that's, that's cool you said that. Cause I've been lately trying to get back into that and kind of meditate and get control of my brain and Sometimes you know, get you a grasp quiet, on reality. Quiet down and bring it all back to where it begins, you know, just like. Oh, for real. Past, present, yeah, like future. Just. For real, life's, life's chaotic and it's so easy to get lost in the whirlwind of everything. So sometimes. You know, our bodies tell it, you know, our bodies, our minds, you know, we got something inside of us telling us what we want out of ourselves. Sometimes you just got to quiet everything else down and listen. Too many social constructs in life, bro, that everything's made up. Whether it's Republican, Democrat, left, right, like be that rough divide, go right up the fucking center with it, you know, like be the change. Why you got to go this or that? Like. Right, that's how even with music is like, well, like what you know, I can make it like a hip hop song, like with Dizzy Wright, and be rapping, and then I'll make a punk song, but I don't necessarily like got to be a rapper. I'm just making. I think music. I think it's it's the mastery of conveying emotion, bro. Definitely, definitely. You know? That's that's all I've ever wanted to do. You can't music. put a genre just, to it, emotion because emotions exactly. change. They're, they're like the waves, bro. Too, you know. Exactly. I've always just looked at life like a movie. You know, it's. A movie doesn't have just like a a single song playing the whole thing. You got a soundtrack and it has ups and downs and it's an emotional roller coaster. Mm-hmm. And that's it's got to tell you the story. It's got to take you on a journey. You got to you got to feel it like you was there with me. That's it, bro. You're right. Emotional roller coaster is the best way to explain it because you never know, bro. I mean, you could be happy one minute right now, walk out your fucking door. Ten minutes, getting a car accident, your day's fucked up. Somebody just t bones you coming out your driveway or some shit like just fucked up my day. Whether you hospitalized or not, you're just gonna be angry, pissed, sad, whatever. Yeah, that's crazy. Me and my me and my homie Royalty, um, we're dropping the EP together. That's the dude uh, last night with the call. Yo, you got a call, T? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, threw that pack to him. Um, We're we're dropping the EP um, in October, um, and before Six Six comes out, called Life Changes, because we both last this last year. Um, we've been working together and stuff and I came to AZ and we've been, um, on the same team and working for the same shit. And it's just been a roller because there's been some of the best ups ever. Some of the, you know, our music's been doing better than ever, but just wild shit happening and, you know, taking things too far and, and, you know, just, you know, kind of getting lost in the, in the bullshit a little bit. And then, you know, I, I woke up in the hospital after a car accident, um, and, he he got he he had a car accident and um like we had run-ins with the cops and all sorts of bullshit just crazy and then uh <laughs> that we we finally shit. like yeah it just it was wild like but like through all of it we were just making music the whole time so like we got this ep that we've kind of narrowed down just called life changes just because it's like like no matter what man life changes like that's that's it. That's, that's it like you know, ups and downs, and you gotta. It's it's been cool working together because we kind of grown together. And, you know, it was like young kids on like first on the scene and kind of just getting lost in the excitement and to kind of like where we are now. Uh, damn, this is the first time I'm gonna fucking uh, announce it, but we just bought our own like studio office uh, oh, space. Right. Yeah, because we got the studio in the crib. That's where we are right now. But like yeah, we, yeah. we finally just. We just bought our own like studio office space, like don't worry away about from neighbors and shit. Bump all fucking yeah, days of the day, yeah, night, morning. Yeah, so just going from like being like them stupid kids that were just way too excited about everything going on to like now it's kind of like we're we're doing this shit like a business and like taking care of it and 
putting the right steps forward and, and, and our, our numbers are going crazy and it's uh it's, it's crazy I, just to kind of like I'm, watch yourself I'm grow glad up. You're doing that though because you might want to step away from the music and work on your other craft to help fund your music. So you're building a business on the side, not relying on just the well. I'm gonna make it to the Billboard. You have your Plan B right here, but you can use this to skyrocket. The one hand washes real, the other. Shit. Exactly, and I'm a songwriter mm-hmm. too, so I'll I'll be doing that. Like we're I, we tied in in the music, man. That's it's, dope. It's, yeah, we we be engineering, writing songs. I hope to get out producing. there and maybe pop in, bro. That'd be fire. I've never oh, been absolutely. on the West Coast yet. I've been everywhere on the East Coast, oh, some man. Midwest, never been on the West West. Hey, you got to come out here, man. It's cool. I've been, my, I my, wish my I was in Washington. You, you ever heard of Oliver Spitz? Oh, that sounds familiar. Fitch team. He, he's, maybe. He's, I think he's out of Washington right now. But uh, he's from Lock okay. Haven, PA. But um, he, I've been trying okay. to get out there. I, I got to see him. I finally got to Lock Haven. We did a show, like a quarantine show, a couple weeks ago. And uh, that was the first time I got to Lock Haven. I've been saying it for three years. Dog, I'll get there. I'll get there. But I finally got there. And now my next trip is Washington, I think, or Oregon, somewhere on the West Coast. Yeah, yeah. That's you cool know. out there, man. You can smoke Halloween. You, so. you, know, you said you're from Washington? <laughs> Yeah, I'm from Washington. What, I grew what, up in Paul? Kelso, Longview. Okay, all right. Yeah, um, so that's like here. that's like literally right in between, like Seattle, Washington's here, and Portland, Oregon's here. Okay. Grew up literally right in the middle of it. Is, is, is it like then, is it true what they say? Like it always rains out there, bro. Like Cobain always, shit, all the fucking always. time. You get always. snow or nah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we do. It it, it gets rain. cold in it's the like, winter. I, I can't do all rain. And I can't do all sunshine. So like. People go move south, yeah. like Florida. I'm like, I can't do yeah. that heat. Like, even though it's like a it, spring. It sucks because it, it's a beautiful place to live. Yeah, it it's is. so amazing. I love it there. Um, and it's it's beautiful. And uh, I love the people and everything. But it's hard, especially as a kid, you know. Like, we were all fucking skaters and shit like that. So we always just wanted to be outside of doing course. some shit. And it's just BMX pouring down rain shit, all the time. When kids yeah, used to do yeah. that shit, bro. Wait, before the fucking exactly. shit took over, yeah. Exactly, it's different. We we still had this, but it was like your friend had to come over your crib and play. And if he wasn't there, it'd be bored playing alone. Now you just link up, talk to shit to anybody across the world. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. My friends just made me get alive last night. It Uh, it looked like you were having a good time. That's why when I didn't realize the times, I was like, yeah, he might have had a little late night. I'll give him some time. And then when you told me I'm on the West Coast, I'm like, oh, shit. (laughs) I felt so bad. I woke up. I was like, god damn it. No, it's fine. (laughs) I should have specified New York time because I I didn't know exactly where you were from either. But like I said, I've never been on the West Coast. Most of my artists that I've had on have been East Coast people. Oh, that's dope. Or Midwest. Jerry well, Robinson was like we, Midwest. We bringing it out here for the West yeah, Coast. You're the, first, you're the first West Coasty, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Shout out to my brother, Baby N.A., too. That's my real brother, man. Dope. He makes some cool music from Washington, too. That's what's, my favorite what's, rapper, what's, bro. What's his, what's his handle? Uh, Baby N.A. Baby, it's, B-A-B-Y-N-A. Um, yep. Okay. Yep. Um, his, his at is like at 16, Baby N.A., All right. one six. That, that's my dude, man. That he inspires me to keep going every day. We up. started making music together. He he makes music like me, kind of vibey, but it's that trap shit, man. You do you, you do check need vibey out. now, but your your voice, like now, are you using what type of tune do you use? Are you using an auto tune, like a not an auto tune, but like a tuner, a vocalizer, a vocal synth? Like what are you using? Um, so the only a- thing I use is Anter as auto tune, really? and okay. I. Yep, yeah, uh, that's like the only thing I use. Other than that, I just use a compressor and an EQ and keep it super simple. Well, yeah, it's, it's not like reverb. overdone. Like you can still hear your lyrics. You know what I mean? And oh, yeah. I, I like that. But I was just wondering because I've never used Anteras except for like back in the day when I was recording on like Mixcraft Two, like when it was first coming yeah. out. Oh, oh nine. Yeah, dude, Anteras now is super cool. But I, use, I don't I even. Use, like, I don't even too. over. Okay, yeah, yeah exactly. I know some people that do that. Still learning. I just use it. I use Anters just because, like, I don't use a lot of auto tune. I just use enough just to just to polish it up and stuff. Because my thing is, especially like with punk music and the R and B music and stuff that I do, and I play bass and whatnot, bass guitar. So like, I want to be able to go out on stage and like actually perform do this it. shit. Yeah, of like, course. Yeah, you don't yeah, want the so DJ like, just having a listening party and exactly. Being so the guy I, that ad libs. <laughs> exactly so i'll definitely be singing it and then just use that to 
to polish it out, you know, add that flavor, you know. Especially in this industry now, it's like you can't get away with making a pop song and not having auto tune well, on it. They like, have uh like I haven't really used it yet, but Waves Tune Live or some shit where you could like Yeah, that's your that's pretty cool. Do it live or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They um, they got some stuff like that that's pretty cool too. I, I'd recommend one that I just got and I've been saying I'm gonna get it for years and now they're out with the second one, but Vocal Synth Two by Isotope. Oh yeah, I uh, I had that back in the day, and uh, just, I just like started fucking with it, and I'm like, eh, it's a learning curve, but this shit's fire. Like just for like uh, like ad libs or your dubs or something, like add a little depth texture. Yeah, no, definitely. I use that sometimes, like for like a backup uh, vocal, like you know, if I like do like something, uh, you know, like when you do like a verse run in, and you have like like the last words kind of like in your face, I'll like dub it up with like some some of the isotope stuff like that because you can add so much flavor that they they have so much effects that you can play with on there that's fun Hold on. that's the crazy thing about it I, i'm muting my chat uh, yeah. bubbles right quick <laughs> i was like yo i, I closed it. it opened again i'm like mute that but oh what, bet. what were you saying oh yeah i i'll use the isotope sometimes though just just for my mixing and backup vocals and stuff that's that's the fun part about engineering my own shit it's like I'll, I'll record some stuff and i'll just sit there for hours just like changing effects and like going through things just to see what it sounds like <laughs> are you are you pc or mac guy um mac now mac. okay so you I, I started Cubase, off, what are you fucking with um so i started on a pc i had an hp computer and then, uh the, a laptop that i started on and it was trash and i think i started, started with all that shit yeah i started with that and I fucking like recorded um, using Cakewalk Sonar. Okay, like I this those days. is yeah, old ass software. Yeah. It looked crazy. I think that's one of but the first now, ones I got recommended too. Is Cakewalk Sonar, and then uh, I got into Cubase, which I loved. But I yeah, know. I never got into that. I went from Cakewalk, and then I got um, FL Studio, and I rocked that for like three years. Uh, and like a lot of my stuff, I was really off FL. Just that's what I was on. And then since I moved to Arizona, we got Pro Tools, and I got Mac computer now, yeah. and that changed everything. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, the door don't really matter. It's really your skill. Like if you're EQ and your yeah. shit right, compressing. Pro Tools is just what's great for how limitless. You. Yeah, yeah. Pro Tools also what's great about Pro Tools is they have the built-in converter, so you could do any audio file from anything and convert it like in the app. Like I know some like like some apps yeah. on Windows don't take MP4. Because it's a uh, Apple for, or M4A, I mean, because it's Apple format. Yeah. Unless you have that in in Pro Tools converter, or you convert. No, it yeah, exactly. So that's it's, yeah, it's definitely got upsides, and it's just so limitless. And like, I've started working with um, um, other like artists and stuff like that, and like um, Snooze God just sent me some beats, um, and he's produced for Black Bear. Black Bear is like my one of my favorite artists. I could listen to him forever. Like. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I seen shit. one song from him that pops up on my Spotify, which was pretty dope. And oh, you ain't even listened to him? That's I, crazy. No, no, I can't think of the name, but it, it was dope. Uh, yeah, Hot it. Girl Bummer or yeah, something. Yeah, Hot man. Girl Bummer, that was it. I was like, yo, this is pretty dope. I liked it, but I never yeah. really explored him. See, that's, that's his new like pop stuff where he's more like mainstream now, but like I've been listening to him for like six years. Uh, it's crazy to see him, like, bro. Like, that's one person I saw him do this shit like from nothing like the first concert i ever went to i saw him yeah. in a cafe a cafe with 30 people bro it was me and 30 people in a cafe watching him perform the last time i went and watched him perform it was a days. fucking stadium with like ten thousand people sold out like and like and i i went i went to the first show like 30 people i went to the show and saw 100 people i saw 250 i saw a thousand i saw five thousand i did like just Growth like to watch him exponentially yeah man. to watch him do it like he's like yo this is real and he's independent he runs his shit like do you know him he's, like he's you know a, him no i I, I wish you should try to get the link bro you never know yeah reach out. i'm i'm just working on it so well his producer just sent me some beats that were uh so, so work with that that producer, working on and then once you got the producing credit under your belt be like yo here's the deal drop that shit yeah um definitely yeah, that's yeah, he, that's crazy. We're trying to work. He just sent me some beats and all that, um, but yeah, I I can't wait just to see where it goes. But working with Pro Tools, that's where I was going. 
working with Pro Tools is just makes it easier because you can send the whole. I, I can send a whole file. I can just send you the Pro Tools file, and you can open up my project. Yeah. And like work on it, like. So Instead it makes it super stems, versatile. Like individually stem files. But um, fuck it. I just got a couple things I want to run past you. I got these cards right here, these questions. Pod decks, just for the spontaneity. Break it up. We'll do like a rapid fire. I'm going to ask you these questions. Don't blame me. Blame the deck. I don't know what we got coming through here. All right? All right, bet. I'm just going to read a couple off. Yo, if you could bring one famous person back from the dead, who would you pick? Oh, man. Damn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tricky shit. It's too many. Uh, sheesh. Uh, either Mac Miller or XXX. Yeah, or, yeah, damn. But then I, I got too many artists I love because I like new artists, but I also Kurt, love like all of them. Uh, yeah, yo. Kurt. <laughs> yeah, shit like that, man. That's uh... All right. Yo, if you could talk to one species of animal, what would it be? Um, Cats. Cats? They're mysterious. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, who'd play you in a movie? Uh, who played me in a movie? Um, my baby brother. Baby brother? <laughs> That's my twin. Good, good yeah. choice. Good choice. Someone who knows exactly <laughs> like me, right? Yeah. What will people look back at us 50 years from now and be shocked and appalled by? Um, Probably humans as a shit. whole. Shit. <laughs> yeah, just everything we've done. <laughs> Oh. Uh, yeah, shit, probably, and right. I mean, shit, probably some of this music. Imagine, you know, like some of this music's cool, but going back and like, uh, like listening to that Cardi B song, like from people in the future, that wet ass pussy. They're gonna be like, what the hell are these people doing? <laughs> bro, we might even be more savages by then, or maybe we're just extinct because we fucked up so much in fifty years. That yeah, who knows? Like... Yeah. Yo, which band or artist, dead or alive, would play at your funeral? Um, uh, dead or alive, Kid Cudi. Who the hell? Yeah, that would do your soundtrack right there, right? Kid Cudi. All right, that's, yeah, that's yeah. it on those. Just a couple. That, that's one of my yeah, sponsors. Yeah, so I like to just do a blame the cards game, rapid read off of these podcasts. Oh, that's right fun. Here. That's Shit. fun. But hell fun, yeah. I, I just want to ask you one more thing. Uh, have you ever heard of Barnes Courtney? Uh, no. Nah. Barnes Courtney, you should check him out. I don't know if he's really up your alley, but like he's another artist who I discovered a couple of years back, and I was like, this dude's gonna do things. And what made me fuck with him is he he dropped his album. I listened to a couple songs, but I saw him on Twitter, and like he came out on crutches, and he had a fucking cast on his leg, bro. And he was just going, bro. And then like he fell on stage, and he's like still fucking going bro and i'm like this motherfucker just fell on his crutches but he didn't let that shit stop like he just rocked the rest of the song and i was like motherfuckers got heart but uh he's kind of like country uh, pop some shit i don't know what the genre would be but some pretty dope shit you should check him out definitely i'll definitely have to peep and see what's up with that but uh what, what what's your handles drop your handles for everybody too it's at hashi everywhere um uh, Hashi dot moto H V S H I Yes sir H V S H I or type in Hashi six and I'll pop up in there. Cool. You got any projects you're working on? What's your next EP drop you said you're working uh, on next month? Six 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 EP is coming out next. Um the six six single just dropped. Um no surprises out right now. Uh, Spotify's going crazy. Let's get to a hundred. No surprises. I'm co-signing that shit. That's probably one of my favorite or projects that I've heard. And this year's been a weird year for music because there's been a lot of people putting a lot of shit out and a lot of people slacking and a lot of people who I would expect to hear a lot from and a lot of people who I never even heard from are just blowing up right the fuck now. So it's been uh, quarantine changed been that grind thing. season for a lot of artists who were taking advantage of this time. Absolutely, absolutely. But my man, Hashi, I appreciate you coming on today. I'll let you go do your thing for the rest of the day, my man. And uh, we'll hey, link up in the future. You. Maybe maybe we'll get a collaboration going in the future. I'd love to work with you too, bro. Hey, let's get it going, work, man. I work on my craft, on. master my <laughs> shit, and then I'll head to you and we'll master something together. All right, sounds good, man. I'll hear from you soon. All right, salute, my man. Be easy. Hey, much love. Take care now. And that's it. That's a wrap. Episode 7. 
our time is now. But nah, for real, like, shout outs to the dude, Hashi, for coming through. Sitting down, we got to discuss, pretty much touched on everything I wanted to touch on. Blame the cards, talk the music industry, just chop it up. I'm telling you, keep a lookout for this dude. Keep an eye out for this man, yo. He's about to do big things. Just the growth that I've seen within the past couple months, maybe month and a half, two months or something since I discovered him off the Guns N' Roses song. The growth has been real, man. It's just been exponentially. It's a snowball effect. I was like, yo, keep doing your damn thing, bro. Don't let nobody tell you different. Keep breaking out of that genre. You know, keep expanding. Taking every different road you can, man. There's not just one way or two ways to do something. There's multiple avenues. Just break out. Explode. You're going to shine. Mark my words. Couple years, it's going to be a national name. You watch. Doing festivals, all that, yo. Appreciate the good vibes you bring to the table, brother. Our time is now. Salute. Also, if you like the Blame the Cards game, you could go to poddex.com I use these on most of my episodes poddex.com use promo code our time that's h o u r t y m e for 10% off your order of poddex we got all different kinds we got what the heck we got would you rather we got episode decks we got it all so our time h o u r t y m e That's the promo code, 10%. If you're looking to start a podcast and you don't know where to begin, Poddex is where it's at, man. Salute to them. We signing off. Till next time, thanks for tuning in. Ah! Our time is now, baby. All day. Peace.